Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. Welcome to the second video in this series where I'll show you how to build a website with Umbraco 13. Um, in this episode, we're going to look at the different Umbraco versions and why we're using Umbraco 13. I'm going to show you how to install Umbraco. Um, we're going to have an empty starting point for Umbraco. I'll give you a tour around Umbraco in the back office, and that's the admin section of Umbraco. Um, we're going to create a home page. We'll edit a template, and then we'll have some fun with some code pens that I've found that we can actually put onto our Umbraco site and make some of the properties content editable so that we can um, see how we can change what shows up on the front end based on what we change in Umbraco. So let's get into it then. So first of all, I just want to talk about the versions. So I made this website called psw.codeshare.co.uk. It's called Package Script Writer. And the idea of this is to help you with um, installing Umbraco uh, because you might need help with knowing what the commands are to install the Umbraco templates and things like that. And this is a really quick and easy way to get things set up. The reason I'm showing you this site, two points. One is to help you install Umbraco, but two is just to show you this page I made about the Umbraco versions. So this is to try and give you a visual aid so you can understand the different versions of Umbraco, uh, which ones you might want to use, which ones you might want to be aware of that won't be around for a long time and things like that. So. Umbraco are following this standard term support model and long term support model. So there are currently three versions. Well, Umbraco 8 is about to end, uh, be end of life in February next year. So, and then the next one that is long term support is Umbraco 10. So that's actually long term support. But that one's gone to amber on this now because. On June the 16th this year, it went into just a security phase. So any security bugs or anything like that, they will release, but there will be no features uh, released for that version. They're not working on that really anymore. Um, so if you were to start any new sites, you, um, depending on your client's needs and how long the project is going to be, I would definitely would recommend you don't start with 10. But you might want to start with 13 because that is also long-term support, and that will be um, end of life in 2026, in December. So we've got another two and a half years left of this one. So this is the current long-term support. Now you might want to, you, it, because Umbraco 14 is released, you might think, well, why are we learning Umbraco 13? Surely we should be using Umbraco 14. Well, the reason that we're not is because Umbraco 14 is a complete rewrite of the Umbraco admin panel and all of the things that we're doing in this tutorial, not all of them actually work currently in the current release version of Umbraco, which is 14.0. So I can't actually do the tutorial in Umbraco 14. Plus, um, this is a short term, uh, standard term support. So it actually runs out in May next year. So it goes into security phase in March next year. Um, so the reason well, the reason I'm saying that is that I probably won't be doing anything for clients on any other version other than a long-term support version. The only time that I would possibly move uh, away from that decision is if there is something released in one of these newer versions where I really the client really needs that feature and it's not in Umbraco 13. So that's why for, for this tutorial, we're doing it Umbraco 13. It's a solid uh, release of Umbraco and it's going to be around for another two and a half years. So I would definitely recommend using Umbraco 13. I would say experiment with Umbraco 14, try it out, um, give feedback if anything doesn't work. It is a massive piece of work what they're doing and it will set the future for Umbraco because it will move away from using angular js in the back office and everything like that I'm, i know i'm throwing a lot of buzzwords and uh, lingo that you might not understand if you're new to Umbraco so i do apologize but the long and short of it is that's why we're using Umbraco 13. 
So let's go ahead and install Umbraco then. So I've got my folder here, and this is where I'm going to put my code. So I want to go back to Package Script Writer. I want to um, click on Start Over just to make sure that it's a clean starting point. I'm going to click on Options, and then in here I can choose what I want to install. So I'm going to choose to install Umbraco templates and the template version. Now, if you leave this as latest stable, that will take um, Umbraco 14. That will install Umbraco 14. So if you're following with this series, don't choose Umbraco 14 because you won't be able to follow along exactly. You want to choose um, either 13.4, which it is today, or if you click on latest LTS, then whatever version that is, when you're watching this, it might be on 0 0.5, 6, 7. This option will take you to the latest version of Umbraco 13. And that's what I would recommend when you start in new Umbraco projects at the moment. So clicking on that, that will take you here and it, and it knows what version to install for you then, the latest one for Umbraco 13. If we go back to options, um, we want to... We don't want to include a starter kit. So this starter kit here will, will like install a website for you. So it will actually have um, a homepage about and all of that. But you won't get to follow along with the tutorial if you do that. So untick include a starter kit. Create a solution file. So we'd like that, especially if we're using Visual Studio. So I'm going to call this Freelancer because this is the name of the theme that we are using. We could call this anything else if we wanted to, but I'm just calling the solution Freelancer and the project Freelancer as well. Now, um, on the right here, we've got this option here. So On the right here, we've got this option to use unattended install or not. And all that means is that when we use this script, it will automatically cre um, create the database, and it, well, create the SQLite database for us, but it'll automatically install Umbraco to the database without any wizard to go through the steps of. So that's quite handy. I like to use unattended install. And you've got the option here of SQLite. So that says V10 plus only. So um, that's one I like to use, especially when doing things like tutorials or local development. It's quite good for that. You could use local DB, um, which is another Microsoft thing. This SQLite should work on cross-platform. So you should be able to use that on Linux or Mac OS. SQL Server, so maybe you've got a connection string that you know. You might want to um, put that in there, and you can use an, a proper SQL Server. You could use that with SQL Server Express, Azure SQL. Again, SQL Azure here. You could do all of those. But what I'm going to do is leave it on SQLite. Then this here is the name of the person that's logged in. So if we go into Users, that's the name there. So this will create a user with that name. So if we go back, I'm going to leave. Oh, I might, I might put Paul Seal. And then the user email and user password. So you can change this to be whatever you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to leave it as admin at example.com and the password is that because it's easy to remember. If you are using this yourself and you're using this in the future when you start a new project um, and you are concerned about giving away your password and email or anything like that, uh, please don't worry. What you, what I recommend you do is leave these as they are here and then when you come to copy the script, put that into Notepad. So copy the script, put it into Notepad and then put your username and password that you want to create in there. That way you don't worry about the website for whatever reason seeing it but the website doesn't track or anything like that you know it's not look watching passwords it, you were it's on a secure network but i'm just saying that's what i would do leave it as a default and then put your own username and password in 
So we've got our script now. It's going to install Umbraco. It's going to create a solution called Freelancer. It's going to do a .NET new Umbraco. Now it can only do that because it installed the Umbraco templates. So it'll say .NET new Umbraco, and it will be Umbraco version 13.4 because that's the version of the templates we're installing. And then it will call it Freelancer, the name of the project. It's then going to do unattended install with my name, um, my email address, my password, and then it's saying development database type is SQLite. It will then add the project that we created to the solution that we created, and then it will run the project and it will be up and running and it will have an empty Umbraco. So let's copy the script, go to the folder where I want to put the code. I will right click and then I will open terminal. Now you might have bash, you might have command line, whatever tool you want to use. And then I'm just going to paste the script and it will warn me, oh, you're copying and pasting a, a whole script of things, are you sure? So before I had 13.32 installed, so now it's uninstalled that and it's in installing over the top of it 13.4. So you can see that was from that command. Now it's it's doing this. That's just a comment. And then it's doing create a new solution. Then here we've got now create the package, uh, create the project. And then it does those things after that. And then it says create a solution, uh, add the solution, add the project to the solution. And now it's doing .NET run project freelancer. So this will kick off the install the unattended install process so this will um, make sure that we have that user created and that it's installed on Braco. there's no um, wizard to follow through and we just end up with a working on Braco back office so because I'm using Windows terminal I can actually do control and click on this one here so HTTPS URL they want so I'm going to click that Actually, I'm going to open it directly in my browser. So copy that and switch to my YouTube profile. Here we go. So it's it's already there, I think. Yeah. So if we click on Open Umbraco, that just takes you to the Umbraco login page. So here is the Umbraco login page. We can actually change this image. Um, and I'll show you that in the tips and tricks episode later in the series. So I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Again, just to remind you that that relates to the username and password that we put in. So now if we log in, we will get to an empty Umbraco instance. So <clears throat> it's loaded up this welcome to the CMS, friendly CMS and Braco. Now you can do a tour and let's have a look at the tour. So what it does is it just highlights key areas for you. So this, let's follow this through. So this is the main menu in the Umbraco back office. And we refer to these as sections. So we've got the content section, media, settings, packages, users, members, forms, translation. Yeah, so that's the main menu. As I say, these are called sections. And this is the content tree. At the moment, there is nothing. But yeah, this is the tree. So we use the tree for content set in the settings section. There's a tree the media se section. There's a tree and so on. And the idea with the tree is you've got like an arrow um, to open out to, to see further into the tree. And then the, these are what you call dashboards. So you can see this tab highlighting here. So you click on these different um, dashboards. This is the search. It's quite powerful, actually, in this version of Umbraco. You can search for something just by, like, maybe you know what some of the content is on the page. So you can search for that. Or maybe you know um, what the ID of the page is or the there's, like, a GUID key for the page. And then this is your user profile. If you click on your avatar, you, it will open the profile dialog. For some reason that's not working. So I'm going to close this, um, this tour. But if we click on that, you'll see your, your profile.
So yeah, let's just have a quick tour manually around this. So this is the content section. This is the getting started screen in the tips and tricks section. This is basically, this is where Umbraco can give you information. Um, everyone sees the same dashboard content, uh, but we can turn that off if we want to. Maybe if you're doing this for a client, you don't want them to see this. So we can, uh, in the tips and tricks episode, I'll show you how to turn that off. The redirect URL management. This is for, if you have a page, and it was called something, the name of that page determines how, what the URL is. And if you change the name, then the URL changes. And so it will automatically be added to this section so that any links that went to the original URL would actually now go to the new URL. So that's the redirect URL management dashboard. Um, I've got another tip about what to do with the naming of this uh, in the tips and tricks episode. So at the moment, we don't have any content and we will do that in future episodes. Media, so this is where you can create um, all different media item types. And you have, I like to put them into all into folders, keep your media organized. Um, definitely don't put just images at the root of the media section, that's just criminal. Uh, so you can drag and drop, you can even drop a whole folder into this and it will upload that whole folder of content uh, of of images and files and all sorts of things and create them as individual items in Umbraco. And uh, what it does as well is that these media items are added to the database. So as a reference to them. So when, when what you're organizing up here in the media tree is just a reference to each of these files. The files themselves you can organize um, into different folders and it won't affect the path of the image or the whatever the file is. So that's quite useful to know. Um, I know in some other content management systems, if you moved a media item around into a different folder, that might actually change the URL. So that doesn't happen with this. We've got the settings section. So we'll be using this a lot. Uh, just a brief overview, we'll be uh, creating document types, and that's how you create your pages. Um, you can edit the media types. Actually, I'll show you quickly. We'll do it properly, but allow us route, we'll turn that off. Only set the folder to allow us route, and then turn this off on all of your other media types, and then people can't put it into the into the root of the media section. Um, yeah, data types we'll look at as well, and that will uh, be where we can create uh, different property editors. Um, maybe we'll want a true false property editor that defaults as true, so we can create our own separate one. And yeah, we've got things like relation types. So in Umbraco, they create when when you do a copy by default, it will relate on copy, and then you can just see the relation to those. And you can use that in your code then. It might be quite handy to know that this document is related to another one. Uh, there's a log viewer, so if you've had any errors, you can see what they are. So yeah, it sees my computer name, Paul Clarkswell, because that's where I work. Um, you can filter these. So we can look at all the different log levels. So let's just have a look at errors and search. We don't see any errors during that date period, even though it says number of errors five. Oh, they're just warning level, not actual proper errors. We've got webhooks. Um, we're not going to touch on webhooks in this series, uh, just because I didn't think of an example that we would need. But I did do a video in the previous uh, on my channel that you can find about Umbraco webhooks. We've got languages. So Umbraco lets you add lots of uh, languages if you want. So it is multilingual built-in capabilities. So maybe you're building a site, you're in Denmark, and you want to do the Danish version of the content and the English version of the content. So it allows you to add all the languages you want. And then when we create the pages, we can vary properties by language or not. So this property is always the same, whether it's English or French. Maybe it's a picture, <clears throat> but this property actually should vary by language and things like that. So you can do that. Uh, there's such thing called content templates where maybe you've got a page and it's always the best example as a starting point. And rather than doing a copy of that page, you can create a content template, which allows you to um, 
it allows you to use the content of that page that you created as a template as your starting point. And that's really good. <clears throat> um, then down here, we've got templates. So these are where the, the layouts for your pages go. So you'll have a main layout with like the references to your CSS and JavaScript and things like that. And the, the actual HTML tags for the outer part of your site. And then you'll have other templates for the inner part of the different pages and how they differ. Then we've got partial views. So already it comes with a few built in, but these are .cshtml files. So these are razor files. And um, in here, we'll be, we'll be writing some of these partial views and using some of these as well. Then we've got style sheets, so you can access the CSS files and some scripts as well. So that's enough about settings. Packages, uh, it's good to know that with Umbraco, um, the, you, you can install a load of packages. Now, these packages you can't actually install from the back office. You have to install them in a similar way that we did with this. And that's what this tool is made for. So if you want to install Usync, you can do that. Maybe you want, when you do your script, you could actually do, I want to install using Skyward Redirects, Contentment, and then you go to the script and it's got them all there. So it's got all the package names. Oh, actually, when I install using, it installs on Racco 14. That's quite annoying. Okay, then install version 13.2.3. And this one as well. Oh, yeah, I just want to have the version 13 for that. And this one, yeah, I don't want version 6. I just want version five, things like that. You can do that. And then on the install script, it does that. So you can just copy those. And then in your command line, you can just paste those commands in. Let's go back here. So that's the packages. So you just they can search by name or creator. Um, you can get to this as well by going to marketplace.umbraco.com. And that is the same information just presented as a separate website. Um, then users. So this is where you, you have users that are created. You can create new users. You can invite them and send them an email to con complete their profile and things like that. You will need to make sure you've got emails configured. And then there's user groups as well. So you can put people into different groups like admin, editor, sensitive data. So you can mark some fields on members as sensitive data. And then... Um, users won't be able to see that sensitive data unless they've got this group added. So that's quite cool. Um, yeah, the members section. So a lot of the time you won't be building sites with members. And in this tutorial series, we're not looking at members. Uh, maybe I'll do another series about members and, and logins and things like that in another later on, but not in this series. Forms. So Umbraco Forms is a powerful way to build forms, nice dynamic forms. You can change the fields. You can add them into groups. You can have multi-page forms. You can have all sorts of different connectors to other, like to a CRM, for, for example, like HubSpot. Um, you can get it to have these workflows that will send it off to an email address or Slack message or all sorts of things like that. So yeah, Umbraco Forms is really good. You can export the values, uh, the, the records from the forms as well into Excel. So yeah, uh, that's really good. It is a paid for add-on. Um, but yeah, that's Umbraco Forms. And then translations. So the, we will look at translations. We'll create some dictionary items and we will use those dictionary items. And what we use dictionary items for when we're doing... Uh, .NET web development and especially in Umbraco is for things that are, would be on the template but aren't part of the content of the page but they're on the template and you don't want to have hard-coded values on the template especially if it's a multilingual site but even if it's not multilingual you don't want to leave just raw text values on the actual website so on the template so we use dictionary items and that way we can edit them here. So it allows the administrators to edit those values rather than having to make a code change to deploy that change to the static uh, text that's on that page. So that's a brief overview of Umbraco. Um, I'll give you a little bit more. If you click on this, it tells you exactly what version is running. You can also find out the version fr from clicking on the help icon as well.
Here you can get access to the tours, but it did seem like the tour was a little bit broken. Um, you can watch free tutorial videos. You can visit Aaron Bracco, which I touched on in the last episode. And this is some system information. This is quite good if you're raising a bug. Um, you can actually copy this and then it copies it as markdown. And then when you're raising an issue, if you want to, you can paste that value into uh, your your issue on GitHub and they'll know exactly what you're working with, um, what version of everything you've got. So that's quite handy. And we've looked at the um, Paul Seal profile. So I think that's enough for the overview, the tour of Umbraco. So we will move on then to the next part, which is creating a homepage. Okay, so let's go back to Umbraco. Let's go to our settings section and create a folder called pages. So just so you know, um, let me just go back. I want to right click, I can either right click on this and then create, or I can do the dots or right click on the dots and then create. So if you just click the dots, you get some options here and it's automatically saying create. So it knows you want to create if you just click the dots. Whereas if you right click, you get the option. Do you want to create? Do you want to import? Do you want to reload? So I'm just clicking on create. So um, I will explain these in more detail when we do the document types episode. So let's just choose document type with template and call it home page. And we'll just quickly pick an icon of home. You can change the color, but we don't want to. You can, and you can even add a description. We don't need to do that at the moment. We we'll just go to permissions, allow as root, save. So now we can go to the content section and click again the dots, create home page, and then I'll just call it home, save and publish. And that is the very basics of creating a page in Umbraco. Um, the first time you do a publish, when you've installed Umbraco, it seems to take ages, but if you were to do another save and publish, it'd be really quick. So let's just have a look at what we've got here. We've got a document type, and over here we've got a template, because when we chose document type with template, it came with the homepage template. Now let's go and edit that homepage and just have a little bit of fun just quickly. Uh, if we go back to episode two, so we've got these two code pens. So this first one is a curtain effect. I just thought it'd be a nice bit of fun to see if we could edit this homepage. Now it might not work like this. We might need some outer HTML around it, but let's give it a whirl. So we're going to copy that. So from raise the curtains. So I will put the link in the description of the video and then we're going to copy the CSS. So if I go back to edit, if I put in, yeah, I think we are going to need a basic HTML layout. So I'm just going to do basic HTML layout. Uh, basic HTML, come on. We just want an HTML document. This is it. Copy that. And let's put that in there. Go away. And let's paste that in there. And then in the in the head, so we'll do a head tag. We will just go back and we'll paste this in a style tag. Paste that in the middle of it and then press save. So in theory, that should create that effect on the page. So if we go back to the home page, click on the content home page and then click on this. And now we've got it. We've got the curtain effect. So the reason I wanted to do this was because I wanted to show you that what we can actually do is we can make this editable. So let's edit the text first of all. So if we just add now you can add tabs or you can add groups. Again I'll go into this more later on let's just add a tab called content and a property called title um normally i would always add a description but for this purpose we don't need to so we look for a string type again i'm not going into this too much at the minute this is just to get you interested in what you can get it to do so now that's got a title so if we go to content and if we just say um hello world obviously 
save and publish that and we go to settings again and we go to the templates and we go into the html and then because we're using what is called models builder so home page and we we know we created a property called title i'm just going to just Go along with this model.title. Later on, I will talk to you about models builder, the different modes and things like that in another episode. But let's just put model.title and then let's reload the front end. We've got hello world. So that's our text that we edited. So you can just check, go back to the content. This is cool. Same publish. Refresh the page. This is cool. So yeah, that's your text that you've edited there. So then another thing we could do, we could get the, um, we could change the colors if we wanted to. So it's a linear gradient and that's color one, color two. So let's see if we can edit those colors. So if we do um, on the document type, we'll just quickly add a property called, um, I'm, I'm just gonna call it color one. Um, and I'm going to call a, use a color picker. Uh, home page, color one, color picker. We'll just leave it like that for now. We can include labels. Uh, no. Right. So do I want a color picker or a color wheel? Oh, eyedropper color picker. That's it. Let's show a palette next to it. Right, here we go. Submit that save and then we'll do another one for color two and then we'll choose eyedropper color picker well we could choose the one we just created actually that one there we just created that now we've got color one color two so we go to content and then what we can do is we can say, I want color one to be red and I want color two to be uh, a shade of blue. So you see that value there, 6FADC, and then that value there, FF33, F4436. So now if we save and publish that and we do, I'm not sure exactly, I don't, I've not used that color picker like that, but well, let's just try it out on the template. So we go back to templates home page and we'll just do at model dot color one. It might not work at model dot color. We might need to Google this and find out together to more and more just work. Oh, it works. Works straight away. That was weird that I thought I picked red for color one, color one, color two. Or maybe the CSS is just the other way around. That's odd. Let's just check. Wheat and midnight blue. Oh yeah, the starting colour of midnight blue. Yeah, that's fine. It, it gets the, it gets the point across. Look how easy that was. We edited the text. We edited the colours. We did that using Umbraco. It doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't. You know, it can be cool as well. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the next one as well. The final example here, a gradient border. So this is an image with a gradient border. So let's have a quick look at that example. So we'll copy this. We'll go into here, we'll go into our template and we will just remove what, well, I'll replace the HTML. <clears throat> and I will replace the CSS. So gradient border CSS, copy that. And then we'll just replace that in the style tag. Save that. Now, if we go to the front end, we should see the car. And you see how we've got the image, you've got the gradient borders. So let's change those. So we've got color one, color two already. So now let's um, add another property to our document type and call it image. And then we'll select the editor. We'll look for an image picker, image media picker, submit that and save. So that's called image. So in our template, we can quite easily just 
Um, oh, don't know what that's blocking it for. So in here we can do at model dot color one, and in here at model dot color two. You might want to give it better names than that. And then in here we can do at model dot image dot URL. And then in here we can do, we could put the title. It doesn't make sense, but we'll just do it for now. Model dot title. You can actually have the alt text of the image, um, but not right now, not for this example. So it doesn't like it. So what doesn't it like? Object reference is not set to an instance of an object. So let's have a look. So if we go in here, we haven't picked an image. So that error is because we didn't set the image. Now, oh, can't start a transaction with a transaction. Uh, ooh. This is odd. This is a strange SQLite error. I've not seen that error before, um, but anyway, we've managed to upload an image, we've managed to render the image, and we've managed to change those colors. Uh, what I'll probably do about the error is I'll probably restart the site. I wonder if there's an issue there, but yeah, that seemed to be an issue with SQLite, and I haven't actually had that error before. But we can not worry about the error too much uh, because the example that you need to follow has worked. And so now you can see the colors that we picked. So maybe we want to make it that one and that one. This probably won't look too different. But yeah, it's uh, Something different for you to try uh, just to get into editing websites using Umbraco. Um, yeah, a bit of fun there. So I hope you like the video. If you do, please click like, subscribe, um, leave a comment to let us know where you're from and if you're enjoying the series or not, If you, let us know if you're stuck. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to going into the next videos. All right, see you later. Bye.